Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. For the first time on the show today, I have Larry Holiday. So looking forward to talking to Larry about the shows he's in. Uh, one of those is the Outlaw Eagles, and then Credence Cool Water Review over at the Branson Star Theater. Been a longtime entertainer here in Branson, and so I'm looking forward to getting to know him better and hearing more about his shows over there. So you want to stay tuned and watch for that. Um, we're now in April. This is a great time to come to Branson. Uh, spring is happening. Um, you know, the dogwoods are out, the red buds are budding. And so I always tell people April and May are great times to come to Branson. Um, so if you're sitting at home and you're like, what should I be doing? Well, come to Branson, see some shows, go to some attractions, uh, and just have a great time here in the Ozarks. And, uh, one of the things I do like to periodically do is tell uh, both uh, vacationers tips and then also some of our locals. And so I have a local tip today. So if you're a Branson area local, I'm going to highly encourage you to get this book called The Dining Passport. You can save a lot of money on Branson area restaurants. Uh, there's a lot of what I call date nights for shows and attractions here. So go to the diningpassport.com, check it out. Um, and it will also help charity. So it helps K-Life, it helps Project Graduation, and this is a way to stretch your dollars further. With inflation, who doesn't want to do that? So this is something to think about. Um, the other thing is, is if you have an entertainer you would like to see on a future show, let us know. Go to our Facebook page and send us a message and we'll do our best to get uh, entertainers here on the show for you. We'll be back in just a second with Larry Holiday. Hang tight. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-378. Ibranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. And on the show today, for the first time ever, I have Larry Holiday with the Outlaw Eagles and mm -hmm. Credence Cool Water Review. Correct. There we go. I got it. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, is that what you said? Yeah, welcome to the show. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad to be here. So you've been an entertainer in Branson for a long time, mm. but but you need to take us back and tell us how you got into this business and how you got where you are. Wow. Well, um, I started playing guitar at about eight years old. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know. I may have been like a child prodigy to some extent, but uh, let's see. When I was in high school, I got a gig with a blues guy named Elvin Bishop, and that kind of got me going in that direction. I replaced Neil Schoen in his band, uh, the guitar player from Journey. I was going to say, I've heard he that was, name. Yes. He was 15, I was 16. Wow. But uh, So anyway, and I did a short stint with Elvin before I went on to do other things, but uh, it was really good experience in my life. Um, let's see, I played with uh, Chuck Berry's daughter, Ingrid Berry, uh, who's out of St. Louis. Um, then I also worked for uh, Little Anthony, Anthony Gordine, and did the Motown thing for, with some of the real Motown artists. So, um, well, let me go rewind. And when I was living in the, uh, the first 12 years of my life, I grew up in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. And so I used to listen to this little blue station out of Calumet City at night on a little transistor radio underneath wow. my pillow. And it kind of made me an old soul before I knew it, because I learned all these songs from the 40s and 50s that uh, uh, my mother would say, how do you know that song? Wow. <laughs> because I used to listen to this old blues station. But uh, so that was kind of, that helped me get a lot of songs in my head back then. And then, um, you know, we didn't have YouTube and what we have today. So what I used to do like on the weekends, if I didn't have anything to do, I would turn on the radio and I would just play along with the radio all day. Because wow. usually what would happen is about every two hours, they would just repeat the songs over again. So I'd have another chance to get to figure the song out if I didn't get it right yeah. the first time. So that was so another- So you learned by ear. Yeah, I developed my ear at first, but then wow. I was lucky enough, I went to a, I was 19 years old and I went to a, 
uh, guitar showcase in Los Gatos, California, and there was a jazz great guy there named Howard Roberts who was giving a guitar seminar, seminar for two hours. And so I stuck around for that, and I was absolutely mesmerized by him, and and so I began, I became his shadow for the next few months. Uh, he, I remember him telling me, "What do I have to do to get rid of you, kid?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, I want to take uh, private lessons from you." And he was just getting ready to go to uh, Los Angeles and start uh, GIT. He started the Guitar Institute of Technology. Oh, yeah. So um, I was the last student he had privately before he went and started that wow. but uh i'm still uh working on the stuff that he showed me back then that's how intricate and he worked for the wrecking crew to it as at one time and he was like the old guard of the wrecking crew that all dressed in suits and then the new guys came on and they you know they looked down on the new guys because they didn't wear suits to work but anyway mm. i digress and anyway um so uh I've had a pretty f full career. Actually, I got signed to a rec my own record deal in 1989, and they put me on tour with a lot of uh, the famous acts from the 80s and 90s then. And then um, I think I was, uh, the record label that I was on uh, decided to, uh, you know, music is like the flavor of the month sometimes, and so uh, the music from the 80s was starting to, um, uh, relinquish itself to the 90s music that was right. like grunge and so I kind of got caught in there with the record that I had done for this uh, label out of Canada called Salmon Dog Records and uh, it, al although we made a great record and uh, I know I got a ton of uh, great reviews on the record we got uh, local airplay on this local radio stations which was great because you become a local celebrity whenever you're you have a song on the radio right. so um, but so anyway, was that was that record under your name, or was it a different band name? Or it was the band called Strikes Twice. Strikes Twice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was the lead singer, the lead guitar player, and the main songwriter of the band. So, um, and one of the fellows that worked at Bill Graham's office is the fellow that signed me through another guy that was from this label from Canada. It was funny. the The story goes he he. I had played this private party with my band playing our original music. And uh, so this guy got a hold of the person who owned the property and they found out who I was. And uh, he came to my door with a contract for me to sign. Wow. Knocked on my door and said, I'm from uh, Salmon Dog Records. I saw your show. Uh, we'd like to sign you to a record deal. So that's, that's how that crazy. Went. I know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, sure, right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway. So how, how did you get to Branson? In that Long story that? short, my mother passed away. And my mother had, uh, she lived in downstate Illinois. And when she retired, she moved here. Uh, my parents had actually bought property here when I was in high school. Okay. So um, my, my, my folks had divorced, but my mother got the uh, piece of property here in the divorce. And so... Uh, her and my stepdad decided to move here and build a, a house on the property. And um, so that's how I ended up coming here. My, actually, my mom passed away. I was busy on the road and opening for all these uh, all famous people from the 80s and 90s. And then my mother, I get a call that my mom passed away. Uh, it was uh, She got sick in November and died in April. So it was fairly quick. Um, she died of ovarian cancer. Mm. But... But anyway, so I came out for my mom's funeral and I had an epiphany where God spoke to me and said, I want you to move here. I'm going to change your life. Uh, everything's going to be different here. So I know I've talked to a lot of other people that here in Branson that have had the same epiphany that really? God told them to move here. Yeah. So I remember I was on a on one of those, uh, what do they call those, pontoon boats with my stepdad. And it's like there's a voice which just talked to me clear as day. Wow. So. That's a great story, though. And well, it's it's the truth, though. Yeah, but it's good. I love it. I love it. And you and I have heard other people that have said you know similar type things. And so, what what when did you actually move to Branson? What year was that? Ninety four. You've been here a while. Though. So yeah, I've been here for twenty seven, twenty eight years, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I it was a you know Branson is a is a 
it's a funny place to be the new guy because especially, and I came here from California and it, it was a pretty tight club here. Um, you know, everybody had hammered down their gigs and didn't really, wasn't really, you know, wanting to welcome too many outsiders to the area back then. Yeah. So I actually, uh, because I'm also a guitar repairman and I fix guitars and build guitars, I ended up, uh, I'm working with Mike Donahoe at a music store, and uh, that's how I ended up uh, getting in with the musicians here in Branson. Is I ended up fixing their guitars, fixing and fixing their guitars. Yeah. And the next thing you know, they're asking me to. They go, "We didn't know you could play. We didn't know you could sing. We didn't know you could write songs." Yeah. So that's kind of how it happened. So. That's okay. That's a great place for us to stop. We'll be back in just a second with more with Larry Holiday. <laughs> back to the show we're talking with Larry Holiday and so he talked about just moving to Branson and so now you're fixing guitars and you're about to get into the scene so kind of take us from there well let's see I got a lot everybody that would call the music store that needed a guitar player I just said sure I'll do it yeah <laughs> so it you know I didn't care what kind of music it was so so I did a little bit of everything and I played for everybody um, and if anybody needed a sub I would sub for them and then I started getting calls there was a a call from uh, uh, a fellow up in Springfield that that had a band and he was wanting to, you know, he was wanting to replay. He had a girl singer that was really good, but he basically needed all the rest of the parts. So anyway, I came down, me and a keyboard player came down and I guess they, uh, he had also called the bass player. So it was like, so anyway, we did a, uh, a jam thing to see if we clicked and we ended up clicking and uh, that band ended up, uh, actually we sat down one day and just said, what kind of, what we're going to call ourselves. And so I came up with the name Thurston Howell. And so we, we used that name for one. I know a lot of people in the area will remember Thurston Howell. Nancy Johnson, a great uh, uh, R&B girl singer from St. Louis that was living in the area. And anyway, so uh, Boyd Manning on drums, uh, myself on guitar, Dave Abner on keys. And I can't remember the bass player's name because we went through a few <laughs> bass players, but uh, the second guy that worked with us the longest was a guy named Alan Edwards, not to be the confused with the guy that sang at Golden Corral, right. a different guy, but uh, uh, but anyway, that was a great band, and we worked together for about five or six years, and and that band also got me noticed by a lot of people in town. The next thing I know, uh, one of the Motown shows in town saw us playing at the Outback Pub and asked me if we would be their band, so, so we ended up backing up uh, one of the Motown shows in town, and then I got a call about, uh, there was a, a group of guys that was doing an Eagle show in town. And initially I didn't, didn't hook up with them initially, but then the two guys that were running it dropped out and some of the fellows that were still uh, trying to keep it going called me. And so I ended up uh, playing in this uh, Eagles tribute show to start with. And then, you know, uh, the fellow that was running it ended up, uh, leaving and then somehow I just ended up becoming the leader by proxy <laughs> just to keep it going but uh yeah. anyway so I've done the the Eagles show for about 15 years now and then uh at, while we were doing that we decided to do well, let's try some other tribute shows too so we did uh well I go one of the first things I did in high school was I played a lot of CCR songs so mm -hmm. it just seemed like a no-brainer for me to go back to doing what I loved when uh, I was uh, a kid in high school. So, and it seemed like there was an audience for it. So we started doing uh, Credence about five years ago and that went really well for us as well too. And so we're doing the Outlaw Eagles right now at, uh, it used to be called the Star Theater. Now it's the Nashville Roadhouse Theater. And we're also doing our CCR tribute that we call Credence Cool Water Review. And like I said, also we do, uh, we did uh, Black Oak Amphitheater last year. We opened with Hairball and with our little Skinnerd show. 
And uh, we'll probably be revisiting that show again later too as yeah. well. And also my wife is also be going to be opening up her new show this year. And she'll be on Monday nights. Uh, she also uh, sings backup vocals for Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee, if you haven't heard of those two guys, two icons in the country music. But my wife is amazing. She's won uh, Female Vocalist of the Year four times here in Branson. I was lucky enough to win Guitar Player of the Year here in Branson in 2019. Well, congratulations. So I was very blessed yeah. and be honored by my peers in town. So. so the thing I like about what you're doing is, you know, a lot of times people in the past, or if they're not familiar with Branson, they think Branson is just country music. Mm -hmm. And here you're doing a tribute show really for the Eagles, which the Eagles, you know, if you go back and look at the Eagles, they've sold 100 million plus records. Um, amazing history, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 100 artists of greatest of all time. And so I think a lot of the people that are maybe coming here now grew up on the music that you're playing. The baby and, boomers. I yeah. think that's who, who we, we, that's yeah. our target audience that comes. And uh, it's funny, the, uh, the, the Eagles, uh, uh, I used to call the Eagles Poco's farm team. I don't know if you remember the group Poco, but yeah. uh, I was a huge fan of Poco as well. That's where Randy Meisner and, and uh, uh, Timothy B. B. Schmidt, that's the group they both came out of. So. Mm -hmm. And then with Credence, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, I guess, I, you know, I was looking at some of the history of these guys with John Fogarty and Tom, and of course they weren't around as long as the Eagles. And it's Only together like, five years. Yeah, and so, but they had a lot of songs that people remember and recognize, and so I, I think what's neat about your show is that it, it really it helps expand the scope of Branson, you know, and so people, people can come here and they don't, and country, there's nothing wrong with country, but they can go to other shows that aren't country just like yours. Well, what's interesting is John Fogarty was a huge fan of country music. And you can hear it, the influences in all of his songs. Not only was he <coughs> influenced by country, but he was also influenced by, <coughs> excuse me, by a blues. And uh, it's funny, it, the, before the guys became Cretans, they were called uh, several different names, the Gollywogs, the Blue Velvets, mm -hmm. and basically... They did cover songs all that time whenever they were at the at the label, and they just kind of it took them. They were they did stuff for seven years before they became Creedence. Yeah. So they actually learned how to write songs, or at least John did, because he was the main songwriter of the band. But uh, I really enjoyed his uh, development because uh, since I was out there at that time, I actually there was a fellow that was a, uh, he, he was the vice president of Fantasy Records, Jim Stern, and he became a personal friend of mine. So since I was such a huge fan of Creedence, I would always be pumping him for inside information. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I can tell you that most people don't know of, their first single, Suzy Q, everyone thinks that John sang the whole song, but it's the only song that Tom, his brother, mm. sang a lead vocal on and it's on the second verse of Susie Q. Next time you listen to it, notice the difference between the okay, voice there we go. and the other one, but it still sounds a little bit like John because it's his brother. Yeah, Anyways, there you go. That's interesting. Okay, so I have um Cre this Credence Clear Cool Water Review is on Tuesdays at eight o'clock. Yes. And then the Outlaw Eagles is on Wednesdays at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. So Folks, you can only see these shows based on what I see here once a week, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, and so it's an evening show, and um, you'll want to be checking that out over at the uh, the. And it's got a it's new name. It's the Nashville Roadhouse Theater. Okay, and that's over behind Olive Garden on Seventy Six Country Music Boulevard. Yeah. So, folks, we'll be back in just a second to wrap the show up. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782 ibranson.com Hey folks, welcome back to the show. I'm wrapping it up today. I want to thank Larry for coming out and be sure to go check out their shows um, over at the what used to be the Branson Star Theater but is now the Nashville Roadhouse 
uh, Theater over there behind Olive Garden on 76 Country Boulevard. Uh, he performs Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. Tuesday is the Credence Cool Water Review. And then Wednesday night is the Outlaw Eagles show. So be sure to check Larry out over there. Now, I do want to let you know, you, he does have an uh, a original CD out called Blue Holiday is the name of the group. And that's him and his wife. And he's the title of the, that is called Living Proof. And so you can go to Spotify and uh, check out that music there. And then his wife, Georgina Holiday, is also going to have a show over at that theater on, uh, I guess, I think it's going to be one night a week. So you might check that out as well. Now, just to let you know, coming up uh, very soon on April 16th, Terry Bradshaw will be in town for uh, a show. He's doing a few shows throughout the year here in Branson over at the Clay Cooper Theater. If you think Terry Bradshaw is the guy on TV you see regarding NFL stuff, that is exactly right. But you may not know he's put out several albums. And then we have Neil McCoy, uh, April 17th and 18th in Branson as well. Neil McCoy is a great entertainer. You'll want to check him out also. If you're thinking about coming to Branson and you're like, how in the heck do I figure it all out? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called ibranson.com. You can see all the show schedules. You can see attractions. You can book hotels. You can do it all on that website. And you're like, I don't want to book on the website. Well, then you can call them and you can get a real person here in Branson at 877-ENTERTAIN and they can help plan your entire Branson vacation. Local people providing great local service. So check them out. And we'll see you next week on Play Branson.